Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Serum's Serra Sanctum, and that is a very old, old card. I think it recently spiked to $60, but it's down to $47 now. Uh, it is a card that I look at and I say this is a systemic problem where you have older cards on the reserve list and people just buying them out and then the price goes up. Uh, is it a good card? Yes, it is a good card. But why is it worth like $60? I'm not sure, or $47 at the time of this recording, but it did hit $60 and that's why I'm making this video. Uh, when you have cards that are older and there's limited in number and people are it's easier to buy them out because there's less copies of them on the market, uh, given that they're older, like Gaidak Teague. But Sanctum is a even more outlier example, or not outlier example, it's a more extreme example of something like Gaidak Teague, which was printed far more than Sanctum. You have people who are willing to just buy, 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 and then because there's a limited supply, all of a sudden they relist at a much higher amount. And it's not... So let me explain what a buy list on something like Sanctum looks like. You don't need to buy 100 copies of it. You just need to buy enough copies for the stores on TCG Player to be like, whoa, hold on a second. Somebody is buying this card. We should, you know, not deliver the card. We should take the inventory in, keep it for a while and see where the price lands and then we'll repost at the new higher price. And this has happened many times in the past before where if some guy buys... 50 copies of a card that there's not that many copies to begin with, it starts off this cycle. So people at the higher end of it are not thinking, oh good, I can sell my Sanctums. They're thinking, hey, hey, I got a relist at a higher price. Let me take it, let me pretend that the card sold out, wait for the high price to present itself, and then relist at the high price, and then you know the race to the bottom happens at that point. So it's a very interesting cycle. It happens to a lot of cards um, like Sanctum which it, all it takes honestly is a few market movers uh, or a list of them. So if you had the email list of let's say 500 people and out of the 500 people, 10%, 50 of them are willing to buy four copies of the card. That's 200 copies of a card that marketplace wise, it doesn't have that many copies to begin with. As soon as that 200 copies is purchased, all those dealers all those other people with copies of it will notice and be like, oh crap, I gotta take off my copies from TCG Player because there's a buyout going out on and I wanna be involved in it. And then they wait. So even though these stores have copies of it, they hold the copies for themselves. And this creates the chain reaction which I've just uh, talked about where you, you have stores relisting at higher prices, you have people uh, in kind of a panic buy it now mode. And it creates this very, in my opinion, illogical bubble. And the bubble has been created many times on many cards. Sometimes the bubble goes down. Sometimes it just, it stays. But most times from the original price to the new bubble price, it goes down 33%. So it's 66% more than the original price but 33% less than the height of the bubble. And that's its new price. And that's what I believe happened to Serum, Sarah's Sanctum, where it went from, I think, I don't know, what was that, $20 when it was at the lowest? Let's say it went to $30, $40, then went from 40 to 60, and then now it's back down to 47. So kind of a scenario where if enough people buy it, uh, there's enough artificial interest in it, then the card does stabilize at a higher price than it used to be, but not at the price it peaked at. Anyway, bye guys.